This is a very special uh, cheat day show episode. We are here at Churcheria Platform, a restaurant that I've loved for many years uh, with return guests. It's the best restaurant in New York. I'm sorry. Rafi Bastos, the... the oh, please. Clap most, most famous Someone's Portuguese comedian in the world? Would that Brazilian. Be? Brazilian. Portuguese is from Portugal. My friend, I have to explain everything to you. That's crazy. Well, yeah, I'm American. Take it down a notch. <laughs> Joined on uh, other mic today, we have Jeremy Sheftel. Jeremy from uh, uh, fame as the $100 Bill Trick. That is a film that he uh, created and directed. I star in it. Star in it. Uh, in addition to that, he works for uh, Robert Schmeagel. He works for Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, he, he works for Tyler Perry. He works for everybody. And now I'm also he, a comedian. I was getting there. Would you give me a second? And today he's slumming it with us. And he's also a comedian. <laughs> Fucking comedians. Great just, intro, Ryan. Comedians, just so insecure. Be like close, just, strong, yeah, as always. They just won't. They, I'm also a comedian. Like, yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, Churcheria Plataforma is Brazilian barbecue steakhouse in New York. Uh, we brought Rafi back because Rafi was here when we did American Barbecue. And he was very adamant about us coming to Churcheria and trying Brazilian Barbecue. Mm-hmm. And uh, once again, I, I love this place, but I understand how you guys are all so thin and good looking and you eat like this. If we just, uh, the, the thing is, churrascaria is meat. Meat's good, has protein. <laughs> if you eat the pasta, that's the thing. You have to ask Italians how they look so good. That's what a it's really surprising for me because they eat pasta all day long and they still think. You That's know what it is? Weird. I have a theory on this. I once met a, an Italian Jew. Okay. And I said to him, oh, so you don't really hate yourself. And y'all, maybe that's the problem. That's the thing. They don't have the guilt. <laughs> the guilt causes weight. Uh, I don't know. Italian More than the food, not, you think? I think it's the guilt. Guilt has pounds. <laughs> yeah, Ryan that. brought Thanks me here <laughs> to bring a Jewish credibility to the podcast. <laughs> that's, I'm trying to. That's what you know, we needed. Continue. Bring him yeah. up at meetings. Make sure he doesn't get Kanye'd. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and we're going to be joined later by your wife. Ooh. She's coming to eat. Lady. She's coming to eat. Oh, she's up, here. she's here. Is this an ambush podcast? She just arrived. Yeah. So she, yeah, we can just grab a chair for her and she can slide in. Come on, sit here with me. You want me to be? Yes, in? of yeah, course. Yeah, we got a mic for you. We have a mic for you. And we have uh, headphones. Well, these are yes. Rafi's headphones. No, it's okay. It, is the, the, the sound good? It sounds great. Okay. So. Hey. This is our first married couple that we've had on the Cheat Day show, so Look this is this. very exciting. Oh, a, a comedian who's married is a, a rarity in this business. Is it? Yeah, who gets married? Are you serious? I didn't know that. <laughs> Brazil must be great. <laughs> Dude, these the, Brazil you, must be amazing. Do you know how important Rafi Bastos is? <laughs> I do. I did, a, I did my research. <laughs> what did you learn? Uh oh. Oh, wow. What is that? Steak Italian. appears when Robbie Italian. shows up to a restaurant. Thank you very much. You guys are not going to eat. I'm going to. I'm just, yeah. I'm just over. I've, uh, I've been here. here. i got to come here with a camera more often because it's. Okay. What do you got? So, uh, what happens at a, a church street platform is they come around with meat and you have these, these cards right yeah. here. So, like, when you're full, you put up the red, and when you're still hungry, you hold up the green, and they keep coming around. They keep feeding you until you turn it red, and then you stop. Which is, which is fantastic. It's, it makes me so happy. Did you try one of these? This is called pão de queijo. It's from my state, or where I'm from. It's a cheese bread. It's a cheese bread. It's a cheese bread. Say that again. It's a good one. It's called pão de queijo. It's from where I'm from, from Minas Gerais in Brazil. It's very good. I've never been here before. It's just bread. I try to I try to keep my calories to meat. Oh well, yeah. Sure. I don't know. I, I, I please don't feel like I'm I'm hating on your culture or your town or or whatever. I just uh, uh, more of a um, a protein guy lately. Um. I could use out this guy. Oh, there you go. Yep. Uh, I need you. Yes, I got you. I got you. So pegador, which is a catcher. Oh boy. It's called a catcher. So he cuts the meat. And then you catch the meat. Yeah, I'd use context Jeez. clues for that. I have great. Thank it's you. My first time. Yep. Good. Thank you. That's how. Obrigado, Tony. Obrigado, querido. Wow. Unbelievable. So last time you were here, we discussed. They're, they're speaking Portuguese. And yeah, she's asking for a coffee, which is café in Portuguese. You, okay. you drink coffee with the meal. Well, that's hard. I want a coffee. Okay. I just, I, you know, I wanna... it's usually coffee is an after dinner thing. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> yes, I'm judging you. I'm judging you very harshly. <laughs> Rafi, can you do me a, a salad and steal a fork from the table behind you? Of course I can. That's uh, a comedy privilege. You're I still get. wearing your big jacket? Ooh, thank you. I am, yeah. 
Why? Do I, don't, don't I, because I want to look good for the camera. Okay. Is oh, there a I, small no, please. I, I enjoy the, the, the married couple fighting. Go ahead. Knock it out. <laughs> she picked out such nice clothing for you, and then you just put on that jacket. <laughs> the big jacket. Does that imply there's a small jacket that you're not supposed to wear? No, I, this is the big one. This, is the, this, is, this changed my life in New York. Okay. I just put this one, and when I, re- when I arrive places, I take this one off. Huh? I don't have to be like taking like uh, pull over. Pull over. Pull over. Yeah, pull over. So I mean, you can't tell. Rafi's a very tall, handsome man. But I think in comedy, we tend to dress down a bit. We don't dress up when we do comedy. Yes. It's. Uh, I think it's a way of um, not being better than your audience. I've heard. Like trying not to act like you're better than them. I've heard. What that about before. Seinfeld? He wears like blazers and uh, suits and. Seinfeld's theory is that uh, it's just so, to him, there's nothing more hilarious than a goofball pretending to be formal. And that's why, that's his theory. I don't say I necessarily agree, but that's why, that's the Steve Martin look. He's a 70-year-old Jewish New Yorker. Of course he's going to dress in a blazer. But there's also, it tells the audience that I came here prepared. Like, I'm trying, Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm going to throw a fastball earnestly. I'm working. Exactly. Okay, yeah. I've heard from people that have toured with Seinfeld. They said uh, in the early days, he used to just have a closet of, like, the same shirt, the same jacket, and he yeah, was eliminating... Yeah, the Clark Kent Superman. He was eliminating yeah. choices from his life by Alter ego. just making it the same thing every day. Yeah. Getting dressed is stressful. Who wants to think about that? Yeah. He doesn't I, think about it. I don't think about it. He just puts some whatever... You're doing the Adam Sandler thing. He yeah. does the it's Adam Sandler It's actually kind of a flex. Yeah. It's like, I could dress... Fancy, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. actually wear the same. You're like Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah. Shorts yeah. and socks. Uh-huh. It's just like Sandler. Tennis so you, shoes and. You guys are new to New York. You were formerly in LA, right? Yes. What do, you, what do you think of the city? You can be honest, don't worry. I think that coming here as a tourist is better than actually living here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Vegas. You want to spend three days here, but yeah. after that, you're like, oh, this place is insane. <laughs> yeah. I got to get out. It's going to kill me. Exactly. But the, what bothers me the most of New York is how dirty it is and the winter. Well, we it's like 75 degrees and it's November right now. Yeah, so. no, this is great. I don't think so. It's great. Yeah. Wait, you don't, aren't you from Brazil? You don't I'm like from dirt? Brazil. And oh, dirt? No. You don't like dirt? <laughs> Brazil's pretty dirty. I'm not that uh, that much of a third world. You like dirt. warm dirt. What's <laughs> <laughs> the difference? How is Brazil right now? Right now, it's hot. You're Summer talking about the starting. weather. You're talking about everything. How's oh. the... Uh, yeah, we well, just had an election now. Who won? Who won? The left. Okay. Is that good or bad? Bad. For her, it's bad. For me, it's good. We, okay. uh, we don't agree in, in politics. Okay. Because, uh, like, our economy is going to suffer a little for a while. But at the same time, now we have a president that thinks about the people. So mm. we are going to pay the price. Yeah, but he says he thinks about the people, but he's also the most corrupt president we've ever had. That's so. not true. The right-wing guy is going to be like, in, t- in two weeks, you're going to find out that that guy stole much I don't more think money. So. Yeah, I did some research on the last podcast. Bolsonaro just got elected, and you were talking about that. Bolsonaro just lost the election. I think you're right. the last podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. He got elected. Now he just lost, no, but no. the first he time. Lost. See, we closed the loop. Came full circle. Yes, we. he lost the election, and now the left is again in power. But, you know. But this is his third time. This guy that won, Lula, it's his third time being president, which I don't think he should be no. able to... To do it again. I, you know? I well, there's the three strikes and, rule. And he just got out of jail. He just got out of jail? <laughs> yeah. I know. It sounds funny, yeah, but it's true. Well, the, whole, the whole lawsuit oh, was God. was canceled because the guy who put him in jail was connected to the right-wing body. So. Still, still shady. Still shady, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say he's the most honest person in the world. I when, agree. when are you guys going to get it together and be like us? No, Bro, it's, <laughs> no it's not good. It's, it's, not good. Part, it's part of the... No, no, it's all a scam here. It's all, it's all kickbacks and payoffs and yes, jobs. Yes, my friend, that's it. You know, like, that's it's always it. been that way. It's always been that way everywhere. But do you like Biden? Uh, I don't dislike him. Uh-huh. Um, uh, he's too confused to be any anything, anything other than... <laughs> 
I adorable. Don't know. You can't give you can't give a shout out to a dead person like that's. Oh not, yes, you can. That's you shouldn't. I do think it's proof that you definitely can do that. <laughs> He said that. Yeah, uh, you, you know that? No, what did he say? He gave a shout out to someone that felt like a person in Congress and that person was dead. <gasps> See, I trust Rafi's political opinion more than yours because you're getting the news from him. <laughs> now you see the dynamic. So. <laughs> but, but this shows how strong she is. She got an opinion from me and she doesn't agree yeah. with me. That's how did you guys strong. meet? How did we meet? We met. In, what was it, 2016? 2016. 2016. Yeah. He still lived in Brazil. I was living in L.A. Oh. And he went there to shoot something, and I shot it for him. Oh, no, you're, that's right. And when I say, oh, no, I'm like, oh, no, you're a producer. You're probably judging yeah. a lot of things right now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Messy no. Oh. Ah. <laughs> no, no. So I shot that for him. He was still married at that time. Yeah. The plot and, thickens. <laughs> the plot thickens. No, but we just, we were just friends. We got along. We're like, oh, cool. Nice to meet you. We followed each other on Instagram. And then two years later, he went to live in L.A. Well, he got a divorce, you know, yada, yada, yada. He went to live in L.A. And I was like, oh, you're living here now. Let's, let's get together. He's like, yes, tomorrow. And I was like, this guy is either very lonely or he thinks I'm hot. Both. Uh, wait, hold on one second. Can you repeat that story? But this time, Rafi, can you chew louder, closer <laughs> to the microphone? <laughs> I'm the only one. I do. No, no, no. Isn't because this a, a eating like a, a yeah, yeah, food Yeah, no, podcast? no, you're supposed to. I don't mind. It, it, it. <laughs> I just I just love the fact that she's telling this romantic story and you're just like. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> this is making me hungry for love. <laughs> okay, it's a minute. Are you Very working well. here in New York? Huh? Are you working? No, I just do my YouTube channel here. Oh. Do you yeah. want to plug it? Plug it. Plug it. Yes. We're, we're big on YouTube. But it's in Portuguese. It's called Vi Por Aí, and I talk about living abroad. Okay. Living in New York and my life and, you know, going around the city, looking at new things, and Brazilians love that, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. I just hit my 50,000 subscribers. Wow, you're crushing us. 50,000? <laughs> we should 50, be on your 000. podcast. Oh, my God. We should have just framed her. <laughs> like, this is a waste. <laughs> no, her, her, her YouTube channel is doing great. It's going well. And, uh, wow, how long have you been doing it? Since February. God, killing us. <laughs> killing us. February, that's less than a year. I know. Yeah. I'm aware. 50,000. Well, subscribers. How many are bots? Oh, none, none. I don't think no, so. you know, it's crazy because she has more views than subscribers. Oh, wow. What's, what's, the, um, what's the suit term? That's everyone, They though. call that uh, when you uh, interact or those interactions. Yes. Is that the proper term? Yes. See? She, I could be a producer. She, she has videos with like 300,000 views. Yeah. Oh, you know which one hit that? The one that I have like that is over 300,000 views is me interviewing his ex-wife. Oh, wow. People well, love Well, I that. think everything, I guess all, all is That's, fair game uh, now. Yeah. What, do you, yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, that? Last time we spoke, I believe you said um, there was a cult. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my wife was, my ex-wife was was in a cult, yeah. A wellness cult, right? One of those, like, be, love everybody the same. Yes. Thing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's like uh, emotional communism. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not practical Well, she's not in any cult form. anymore. I think she felt that she loved her kids too much <laughs> to love everybody the same. That's good, right? Yeah. I think I love my kid more than I love others, so I'm not, I think I'm not ready for this. That's good. It's a good call. How long was she in the call for? Huh? How long was she involved in the call? Ten oh years. God, ten years, yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I just feel the disappointment in knowing of like putting ten years of your life into something and being like, this is it. This is everything. This is the, the chosen path. And then... Are you saying she did a good choice committing to the cult because <laughs> she put the time in? It's got to be a, it's got to be a major loss if you follow someone as like the chosen one or the Messiah, and then they just you it's just like, oh, like I was wrong, I missed. Probably, yeah, <laughs> it's probably, yes, I sold everything exactly. I had, but it turns out oop, oopsie. It's probably a lot like quitting comedy after ten years. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, if I quit comedy now, I'd be like, oh no. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a lot of wisdom. So, some people say I haven't even started comedy. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been doing it? Uh, seventeen years. Oh, it's the same as you. 17 years. Yeah, but he's the king of Brazil. Careers, the same the king level of, of success, <laughs> same level of money. Yeah, but that was, when you started, that was, when you started, the scene was built, you know? Was what? Built the scene already. was built. 
Oh, you started from the ground up. I did. It wasn't. It was. It was there, but it wasn't what it is now. Meaning, like your uh, building had an elevator. He had to go find the cement, and start mixing shit. But there's two sides on that story. Some people can say that for me was easier because there wasn't any comparison. But at the same, yeah. they said at the same time there was not a scene. Yeah. And for him, there was a scene. Yeah. But so there was opportunities. But also. Yeah, all right, I get it. It's, it was all on me, and I messed it up. I got you. <laughs> we, we see where you're going. Yes. Well, you so know, there's a little fish, small pond, and then there's a little fish, gigantic ocean. Gigantic ocean. Yeah. Yes. It was it was pretty close though when I started. When I when I started comedy, there was like 20 people at the top, and they stayed at the top for like 10 years. Like meaning they got all the auditions, they got all the looks. Yeah, cisgender white guy. No, no, but no, it was like they weren't. There wasn't this notion of like let's find the new young talent. It was like these are the established comedians, and these are the people we'll look at for the TV roles, yeah. the film roles. <laughs> well, um, what's your quote? If you're you know a heterosexual white man in comedy, you have to be way better than everybody to get noticed because there's so many of you, of us. So many of you. There's so many of us. Yeah, I, wanna, I wish I could exclude you. No. But uh, I am the same uh, For better or for worse You gotta work with what you have Jeremy, how long have you been doing comedy? I think this is my Sixth or seventh year yeah, I, I remember when uh, you started working at Dangerfields Yeah I know That's Rest in power, Dangerfields The, the club doesn't exist anymore? Oh, no I was uh, one of the Ryan and I were one of the last people to ever perform there uh, But the pandemic took Dangerfields yeah, and Chario. And Chario, you know, uh, have, do you know anything about Dangerfields other than like the Young Comedian specials or no. Rodney? So the, um, as far as I can tell, the the hot club in New York shifts. So it started with the Improv. Yeah. Then it went to Catch a Rising Star. Yep. Then it was kind of the comic strip. Yep. Dangerfields was strictly a headliner club. Rodney played there, uh-huh. but yeah. it was it was where they filmed the HBO special. So for a time, I guess in the early '80s, it was the yeah. hot club. That's where Kinnison blew up. Dice Seinfeld. Oh. That was his first TV, his first TV appearance was at Dangerfields, yeah. shot in that club. So after he died, the club like lost a lot of the strain. No, no, he actually he got so busy with other stuff, he lost interest in the club. Even though he was a partner, his other partner was this guy uh, Tony Bavacqua. He's a bass player. Bass player, uh-huh. yeah, and Tony kept it open for fifty years, but um, the expense of the city and the pandemic, he just just decided not to do it anymore. The crazy thing is, like, nothing of, in that like comedy it? club has been updated since the day it opened. Even the audio sounds the same as it did back then, and the reason I know that is because um, when I was working on Seinfeld's first Netflix special at the comic strip. One day his assistant just handed me a bunch of tapes and she was like, Jerry wants this digitized. And it was his first recordings on a little cassette tape player of his sets Uh from when he started out in comedy. And some of those sets were him recording famous comedians to study them. So he went to Dangerfields and sat in the back of the club, hit record, and he listened to Rodney. And then uh, Jackie Mason popped in. And that was like a cool poppin' back then. That's like if like Chris Rock popped in. And I listened to that recording. I listened to my recordings on my little like memo app on my iPhone. It sounds exactly, the acoustics are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. It is wild. Yeah. So when you did that special, Seinfeld special, yep. was that material, all the material that he was doing through his life? Well, then he had the in Long Island, on Long Island bit that he threw in at the last second. But, um, yeah, that's all the stuff that got him to The Tonight Show. So that was a very, uh, you know, as a huge comedy nerd, and Jerry is my favorite comedian. Uh, I heard you talk about, you know, growing up, that like, that was your the archetype of a... Uh, yeah, so when you started, you had to use him. Well, Dangerfield, just, just to answer your question there, Tony was uh, very adamant about not replacing anything, but if he needed to add something on, he would. Yeah. When I started working there uh, 13 years ago, they had a rotary phone system. So in this country, before they broke up the phone company, there was it was Bell Atlantic, I think. Yeah. And uh, you wouldn't own a phone. You would rent your phone from the phone company. Uh-huh. So everyone had the same phone. It was a black rotary phone. So then they break up the phone companies. Well, Tony didn't want to change anything, so he kept that phone system. Wow. All the phones were rotary. 
uh, he eventually had to change that because the guy who repaired the phones died. Uh-huh. And the phone company didn't have anyone that knew how to operate that system. Uh-huh. So Tony would just add stuff on, but he would never take it out. That's crazy. Yeah. And then uh, with uh, Seinfeld, um, you posted about following him at, what, Gotham? Yeah, that was a... I knew that performing with a guy like Seinfeld, like in the same show... It's something that you get used to here, right? You yeah, grew up yeah, after yeah. Chappelle, and sometimes we are the seller, and then Chris Rock popped up in your show. I knew that that image for my country would be like something that people would be like, what the fuck? What's, <laughs> what's going on? I, I think I've never got so many messages, so many comedians writing me, like when I perform, when I posted that picture with Sankar. The, the one just that you posted yeah. like two days yeah. ago? never got Did so you get to have like a, a moment with him? Did no. you speak to him? No. Tap on the shoulder, good set. No. no. Nothing. He's, he's gotten is better he, about that. Is he like an approachable yeah. guy? So, it, I mean, Jeremy y- y- works for him. So It he, depends he, on, on uh, how civil you act <laughs> in your approach. He's very big on civility and manners. So if you're very invasive and say, let me get a photo, and you kind of hold him in that photo hostage situation, uh, he is not really that... Uh, he's, he can be considered less approachable. He's standoffish sometimes. I've worked with him at Gotham many times. Um, we didn't really interact too much. I had one interaction with him, and uh, at least I got a story out of it. So oh. I'm doing a set. I see him walk in. Now, I really wanted him for the movie before we get started, which you guys came to the screening of the yes. other night. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm on stage, I'm doing my set, it's going great, but I'm thinking, like, I got to get this guy in my movie. I got to get this guy in my movie. So I, I do my set, I get off stage, it was a good set, I'm walking over him, and for the first time probably in 10 years, he goes, very uh, funny set, young man, very funny. And I, I, I didn't even let the compliment ma- like land, I'm such an idiot, I went... You did warm-up comedy, and I'm making a movie. And he goes, whoa, who told uh, you that? I go, I, I heard you did warm-up comedy when you were, like, 23 years old for a 60-minute magazine show. And he's like, yeah, I did, I did. He's like, how do you know this? Like, he was really involved. I go, this guy Mark Summers told me. And you could see it in his eyes. He remembers who Mark Summers is. And he goes, ugh. <laughs> because he was thinking back to his act, whatever Mark was doing at the time. might have been comedy magic whatever it was but like for that moment Jerry wasn't like the king of comedy he was just back in the 70s thinking about someone he performed with Uh huh. yeah you really forget that he's had such a large history in New York City that he he kind of um, projects a lot of um, his, his early years in comedy which all comedians do onto the current climate so I remember one of my first interactions with him as a comedian was you know I was leaving work and, you know, he rides his bike, and he, he's thinking, like, all right, I really don't want to have to be Jerry Seinfeld right now. And he's trying to pretend like he has his helmet on. He's peering over, and he sees it's me. And he says, oh, Jeremy. And I'm like, hey. And then he says, so, what do you think? And I'm like, about what? Anything. And I said, well, I'm actually on my way to do a, I was doing a spot at Greenwich Village Comedy Club. And then he was like, oh, how is it over there? And I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like, um, it's like a theater in the jungle. You know, it's in a basement. There's debris on the ground. You feel like you're doing something wrong just by being there. It's got a lot of ingredients, a great comedy. And then he said, oh, they must be doing something, right? There's always lines, you know, around the cellar. And his, like, version of the cellar is what it was when, when Louis started there. Yeah. So he thinks of it as just, like, that whole area is just, I, I really... You know, I don't want to go there. <laughs> well, shout out to the Comedy Cellar. They're big supporters of the club. They're doing fantastic. Well, now uh, he knows it's different. They're big supporters of the podcast. Now he knows it's different, but yeah. it takes a while for him to adjust. Like, he did the same thing. Uh, I don't even know what I can and can't say, but it's fine. Well, yeah, I mean, but, he uh, definitely liked Dangerfield. He did an interview there for a documentary. No, now he loves the cellar, yeah. but um, here's a good little anecdote. You'll appreciate this. It's about podcasts and Jerry Seinfeld. Um, we had Brian. Do you watch Comedians in Cars? Yes. So the first uh, Brian Regan season one episode, you know, Jerry always likes asking one of his questions. Yes, all the guests is. So what do you got going on the rest of the day? Mm-hmm. And Brian's like, Oh, I'm going to do Mark Maron's podcast. And Jerry's like, Oh, where does he record that? And Brian says, In his garage. And Jerry says, oh, That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he doesn't know. <laughs> he did. I know, but it's that's exactly what our, where our point is, is that he has a frame that's kind of old world and takes him a while 
to adjust, but he does adjust, and he is very open-minded to trying to try new things and be in touch with the rest of the world. I mean, Comedians and Cars is a perfect example of that. He did it, no promotion, on Crackle, an unheard of streaming service. Yes. The only thing that we actually worked on Crackle. It's yeah. the, only, the only product that actually... It still went belly. Yeah. So, so did you get him? Uh, I, I ended up emailing back and forth with his assistant, and uh, she, he said he, he had his own projects, he just didn't have the time. So, But at, uh, least, at least it was... You got close. I got close. I was very excited about that. But how, what's it like being married to a comedian? How do you like that? It's not as funny as you'd think. No, it's not. Of course not. No. I'm not oh, even God, funny no. on stage. Can you imagine that? <laughs> no, oh. you are. You are funny on stage. Oh my God, I think he has he has But other, you'd rather be funnier on stage. Yeah. I don't know. I guess people ask me, you know, what it's like to be married to him because he's such a controversial comedian in Brazil and very kind of like um, says what he's thinking even though it's offensive and whatever, you know? So people get this idea that he's kind of this like ogre kind of guy. But uh, how tall are you? But he's not. He's six, six seven. seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's actually very, very sweet and very romantic, which is like people don't really know. <laughs> okay, this is getting, this is getting hey, weird. He's you, reaching you, over for Jeremy. Take now. your ogre hand off my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> ogre hand. I would imagine it's got it, my experience with relationships is it's it's usually harder on the person you're married to or that you're dating because we're out at night. You oh, know, we're out yeah. doing shows. Yeah. I mean. You're, you're having lunch with your husband, but you're actually on a podcast. Like I that's know. It's like everything is... <laughs> and I just found out about this coming over here. Um, but no, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. And also, like, I try not to be... I could uh, go out more. I could do, like, three shows a night, four shows a night, if I search for other clubs. and. But some. I, I don't think I have the... The same like uh, voltage, will will that I had like 20 years ago. Now I choose better what I do, and I I like to stay at home. So, and I am uh, I'm a very good man. I'm gonna start saying voltage. Voltage. I mean, I mean voltage. But you oh, would say voltage. Sounds like voltage. It's like people say target instead of target. Voltage. voltage. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be. I mean, like, there's there's the secret is you just work your ass off. Like, if you look at the guys that are succeeding now, there's no, or the women, it's no, it's no magic wand. They're doing three sets a night, four podcasts a day, filming, editing. But it's, as the um, experienced comedians, do you think with, with age and comfortability and just overall self-confidence? Money, dummy. That's money. what does it when, you, when well, the rent's paid. Chris Rock says money's the best lotion. <laughs> money helps, of course. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I mean, I guess... Is, is, but is there some validity to that? Just you become more comfortable with where you are in comedy, where you don't necessarily need to, like, burn your wheels and spin them out every night. Just chasing, like, you know, five, six sets a night, going crazy. And also, I think after after a while, you you know who you are. So I think that's a little better, you know? You don't, you don't want to pretend. You don't want to uh, show a side that doesn't exist. You feel more comfortable in your own skin. I think that's what makes good comedians. When you see a guy like Louis or even Seinfeld, they know who they are. Yeah. Seinfeld know he knows he doesn't want to curse. He's not gonna play this game. That's him. So he knows who. He How amazing have... would that be though? If like he just he just changed his whole style. Fuck. What is like, this like, like, like? I mean, on the show, late night I, Seinfeld. He yes. curses pretty but like, I mean, liberally like, in real life. Jerry Seinfeld raw. Like you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, there was, um, when he had Howard Stern on, uh, there was a great moment where um, he was like, I've always wanted to do this bit, but I can't because of who I am. <laughs> but it would never work. Like, it would be so unpopular. He would lose, like, his whole fan base. But he was like, Howard, you could probably do a bit like this. It works for your image. And he was like, you know, they always say, uh, you know, being a mom is it's, it's the hardest job in the world. So it's so tough being a mom. And then he says... How about being in the fucking world? <laughs> There's um, what's that name of that bald Bill comedian? Burr. That it, yeah, I was gonna Bill say Burr. that's a Bill Burr. That's yeah. a Bill Burr. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe that's why I didn't oh, do no. it. Yeah. Oh no! So maybe you that's why I didn't do that. it. Bill Burr took the bit. It's a great bit, actually. 
Yeah, it's good. I like yeah, Bill I'm, Burr. I'm glad you said it because me and Robbie yeah. weren't going to be like, oh, by the way, that's stolen. <laughs> well, he never did it. It was just something, an idea I he know. thought was funny. I, know. I, don't, I, know. I know. I know. I know. I don't think Siphon is watching clips on YouTube. You know, I think he's. I think he watches he's a lot watching of YouTube. your show. He does. Oh, God. <laughs> not watching he my show. He finds a lot of comedians he likes from YouTube and Netflix. Hassan Minaj was just he just watched a random Netflix special, Homecoming King, and he asked him to be on comedians and cars. It's not a random special. It's not. It's, it's a on Netflix, it's a random special. Like your squad specials, it's. There's a lot of those. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, um, it's, you know who Greg Giraldo is, right? Yes. So, just something something interesting I'd heard last night. Greg, very funny comedian. I've, I had a chance to open for him. Sweet guy. Uh, he's got kids. One of his kids, also named Greg Giraldo, is now doing comedy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of shows with him. You do? So, yeah. I like him a lot. I've, I met him when he was working at the uh, Comedy Cellar. He's a waiter over there. So oh, he question, is. I didn't know that. He was working at Five Guys. I don't. He's not working at the Cellar anymore. He is doing comedy, though. So my question for you guys would be, uh, well, one, do you want kids? And two, would you let them do comedy? Uh -huh. Well, he has a kid already. Yeah, I know. He's 12, but he's not... Not at all? He's not at all a comedian. Like, he, he wouldn't be a, com a comic. Did I tell you this? That when my kid was, like, like, five or six years old, he used to say to me, I don't like people laughing at you. Oh, really? They yeah, thought they were like making you. fun of you. I don't like people laughing at you. That's uncomfortable. Because uh. they're laughing at you. Why they're laughing at you? I'm like, no, that's that's how I'm paying your you're, bills. You were like, shut up. You're in a cult. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> but now he gets it. He yeah. gets it, yeah. He yeah, but I don't think he would be interested in no, being a comedian or anything think, like no, that. No, 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 but no. I think that you, you would. We, we, we've talked about having kids, and we're probably going to have a kid, a just one. Now, so we got a puppy, so yeah. you know, take Running it step have by excuses. step. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. you. Oh, <laughs> I want the kid. She's like, I want a kid. She's the one who oh, brought the skills. He wants it more than you, me. He now. wants the kid, and you wanted a puppy. Yeah. Why, Just why start, no kids? starting, what, what you, you know, what you about? little by little. I'm too anxious and too stressed out. That for the puppy, we got the puppy, and I was for two weeks like the officer of pee and poop. Like yes. I wouldn't leave the dog by itself. I have photos of her looking at the dog while she was waiting for the dog to go pee. <laughs> She's like looking, <laughs> and the, the the dog is like looking at her. <laughs> With a, uh, we got a little playpen. Like he's in a cage looking at her, and she's like looking at him, <laughs> waiting for him to pee. It's the saddest thing ever. No, so, you know, little by little. But I think that you would enjoy having a kid that wants to be funny and wants to be a comic. It's got to be hard. It's got to be really hard for the, uh, a kid to do art, the same art that the parent did, you know? Oh, my like, God, Can yeah. you imagine, like, someone like... I don't Celine Dion's daughter trying to sing. Yeah, yeah. You remember that guy? Uh, I think Tom Hanks. Yeah, Colin yeah, Hanks. Colin Chet Hanks. Hanks. He's got, he's got two, right? Yeah, one, one of them's kids. a little, little well, out there. One of them's a, a rapper? <laughs> Chet, Chet yeah, Hanks. Yeah. yeah, they all become... Hot a, Girl Summer, Hot Boy Summer, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They all was. become a yeah. kind of a joke, right? Nobody takes them seriously, so that's sad. Somebody had... Oh, I think it was Burke Kreischer that had the bit about... Uh, or maybe it was Ari Shafir. It's like, the reason... Chet Hanks is the way he is is because his dad's fucking Tom Hanks to have to for us to have Tom Hanks who's one of the greats yeah the greatest of all time he needs to be a shitty dad yes <laughs> yeah in order for him to that's be the only way we can have Tom Hanks yes <laughs> but his uh, his other son is Colin uh, yeah. Colin Hanks was the, the yeah he was the normal one he did um, what's that uh, Orange County yeah yeah he was the lead in that He's a uh, pretty, pretty, you know, a little milk toast, but like you say, you need he Tom went Hanks. I to my university. What university? Yeah. Chapman University. Oh, wait, school. I take that back. I rescind that. Colin Hanks was excellent in the uh, Fargo series. Oh. He played a detective in season two or season three, and he was unbelievable. He was really good. I think we lost half of our audience right now. Yeah. With this story. That's what I'm saying. Community is so in here, positivity, yeah. <laughs> and where do you guys live now? Uh, just an area. We live on the Murray Hill. Murray okay. Hill, Bro Town. Yeah. It's, nice. it's yeah. close to here. It took us 40 minutes to get here. It's close, but we live on 39th and 2nd. <sighs> well, don't give out the address. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's going to no, you know, no. kidnap us. Yeah, but it's very, very loud. Yeah, that's the whole Second Ave is... Where do you live? I'm 10 blocks away from here. Oh, yeah. Midtown, yeah. 
So nice. you live close to us. I'm on 56th. So. Oh, you're a little, wow, oh, you're better. No, that's not how it works. Because <laughs> by that logic, you'd be like, the best is on 137th. They are <laughs> way up there. I used to live on 137th. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. How was it? It was a lot, right? The salad years. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, had, um, I, I was roommates with Joe DeRosa. Oh, wow. Um, Joey Roses. Yeah, Joey, shout out Joey Roses. Yeah, he was on the podcast. You know the sandwich shop? Yeah, you know the yeah, guy who yeah. makes sandwiches? Uh-huh. Well, he's a comedian, but you know, he's... I know, I know, I know. Have you been to Joey Roses? No, no. I gotta go. It's a bar that has sandwiches. Like, he says it's a sandwich shop. It's like, a cool it's a, bar. I'm like, but it's a bar. Like, this is a bar that has sandwiches. You're not a sandwich shop that serves liquor. Yeah. <laughs> but is he, is he doing well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the Lower East Side. And uh, I, don't, I guess we all have to uh, sell merch now. Merchandise. Yes. Yeah. Sandwiches, sauces, T-shirts. Yes. Oh, I got a, I got a T-shirt for you after the show too. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you oh yeah, much, we're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna. This is getting big, huh? Oh, huge, huge. From the first episode to this one. Oh, look at this, you guys, huh? Getting clips on the internet and stuff. That's good. Your wife is kicking the snot out of us. But she's. <laughs> are you pretty? Are you pretty? <laughs> are you a pretty asking. woman? No, you're not. So it's not gonna be the same. I can talk about not travel. to an ogre. <laughs> yeah, you can talk. About, she does talk about travel, and she. The thing is, a lot of people watch her because they wanted to learn English too. Oh. Not that many people speak English in Brazil. Like five yeah. percent of the population, like four percent. I know population. I'm a mutual comedian friend of ours, Diego Barrow. Diego, yes, yeah, yes, he's yes. my uh, Brazilian comedian friend. Uh, yeah, on the internet. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was filling me in on the scene over there because I guess yeah. he's kind of like a version of me. There's a lot Brazil. of uh, the scene is really hot now in Brazil. Yeah, YouTube make it made it like really like happen. So, well, I mean, what, what obviously bring uh, being for both of you? What do you want? What do you want out of your careers? Oh, well, that's a good question. So, but really, so let's say the uh, mm. the entertainment. Wow, gods. this is something that she's been asking me for two years. But let's go, go, go. Yeah, I think he wants a baby. I think that's. <laughs> No, Wait, he wants the I baby. I think he doesn't have an answer to that question. So. Well, all right. So the I, I always like to say, and then I'll throw it to you. But for you, I'll say for the co the comedy gods come down. They go, what do you want? Is it a film, a TV show, uh, a, a karaoke career? What? Uh, I set some landmarks for me when I got here. Some. No, no, no. Wait a second. Who made you set goals? She did. Because you had it, you had didn't an, have any. Because the thing is, Brian, let me explain to you one thing. <laughs> I, it took me years to build my career in my country. Now I have my audience. I feel that I'm a successful comedian over there. I came here because I really wanted to learn and to test myself and to challenge myself next to people that I admire in those places that I have been looking from far away like oh can you imagine one day I can play in this room and I can do this and I can do that that would be such a great thing and this is what I do I love the journey and it's really difficult and I think I love the journey now more because I reached certain point where I have a little bit of money and success in my country. So I really enjoy just like I have two shows tonight in the two biggest comedy clubs in this city. This is a perfect day for me. I'm having barbecue with my wife, with friends, and we're shooting a podcast. And tonight I have two shows. I just talked to my kid. He went to school. He did a test. He did well. Everything is awesome. I help him with his homework. I'm having the best time of my life. But that's the thing. It doesn't make me think in the future that much. So we had a conversation and she said, you need, you need goals. And then I, did, and I wrote down like 15 things that I wanted to do. Which you've conquered the most. Yeah. There's two things that is, I still have to do, which is my special that I'm planning to shoot in December. And I wanted to have a... A set on a late night. I don't. I think that's eventually it's going to happen. A set on a late night. Any any late night. Yeah. That would be. This is the one that I I I wasn't able to do it. I got a I got regular at the cellar. 
which I thought it was the most difficult one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's the most difficult. I got on my goals. I had a. I wanted my frame at the cellar, like picture at yeah. the wall, and I got that. And I want to play Madison Square Garden too. Oh my That's God! That's a good you one. You added that one. Yeah, I, did. I didn't know about that yesterday, one. Yesterday, I added. Wow. So. You added that yeah, one. I did. I oh did. my God! I like that Madison Square Garden is just like oh, I almost forgot Madison Square Garden. It's be it's becoming a <laughs> almost a spa oh, yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I, can, I if I build the right show in Portuguese with my friends and stuff. That counts. Know? Yeah, yeah. Doing it in Portuguese I'm gonna, counts. I'm not gonna be able to build like. America, if I play. learn Portuguese, can I open you for you? <laughs> <laughs> is, a net, is the the special in December? Is that in English? In English, yes. Wow! So yes. you have multiple specials in English and Portuguese. I'm gonna have my first special in English. Wow! But the thing is, uh, I don't know what's the right platform for me to to release this special because if I do with Netflix. It's just gonna be one more special over there that nobody's gonna click because nobody knows who I am. What I'm doing right now, I'm building an, an audience here. And I think that's gonna help me in the future. I wanna have a little audience that I can go to, I don't know, Columbus, Ohio, and bring like two, 200 people, you know? That's gonna happen wow. eventually. It's very, uh, it's kind of inspiring for somebody like me to hear, like, because I know. I can't believe your target is really Columbus, is. Ohio. It really is. But you've accomplished <laughs> so much, like, like an <laughs> unbelievable God. amount. And you're like, well, that's not really the most important it's thing not. to my it life and what I want to achieve in my life. Yeah, because we, we get too attached to the final goal. And uh, when you get there, I'm telling you, those guys, they're not the happiest people in the world. They're going to look back and think, oh, remember those days when we were in the table at the cellar? That was the best moment of my life. If you ask all of those guys, yeah. they probably have the best memories. So if you can... Make a living doing what you love and telling your truth. And that's, that's the beauty of the whole process. Do you like some garlic steak? Garlic steak. And I want to Good keep, timing. And I also want a picanha. Yeah, right here. Um, and what about your, you know, obviously you have your YouTube show, but you're mm -hmm. also a producer by trade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now I'm just doing my, my YouTube channel. <laughs> And I'm happy with it. I think I want to continue doing uh, my my channel, make it grow, get more sponsors. I have two for now, but I want I want to get some sponsors? more. I have uh, killing us, just Cambly, embarrassing us. Cambly, which is a um, it's it's an it's a conversation app in English. It's awesome. It's very cool. So people go on and they talk in English. They learn. They have tutors. They learn English through this, you know. They have conversation app. with American people and American yeah. teachers. It's so good. Yeah, and some VPN, a VPN too. Um, we need VPN because we want to watch things in Brazil. The only, the only thing that we can do is go access a VPN and connect to Brazil. To right, watch stuff right. There. Yeah. So I'm happy with the YouTube channel for now, and then I think for the future, I don't. When I think about the future, I don't really think about career-wise. I think more of, like, personal, like, goals. Like, if we're going to get a get pregnant and have a baby and where that's going to be. And I'd like to go back to Brazil at some point. He doesn't. Yeah. With that, I mean, like, for, to raise a child? Yeah. Isn't that, I, is that a better place to raise a child? I, I think so. Yeah, because, like, that's where our family is, you know? I yeah. wouldn't want them to be far away from from family. I want them to have grand grandparents cousins. and cousins and his the big brother, which is going to be his son, okay. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I understand. I don't agree, but I understand. Wow. All right, sounds like we got some negotiating going on here. <laughs> so, like, if you want the kid, you got to go back to Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, because... Brazil, yeah, I should never lived in Brazil. I should never lived in Brazil. Really? Yeah. I lived there till I was four. Then I went to Ecuador. I grew up there, and then I went to the U.S. And then I came to the U.S. I went to California. Oh, wow. Do but you, my whole family lives there. Do you guys ever, I know you don't necessarily, you know, do the same thing, but you both kind of, there is some overlap in terms of having a career in entertainment. Do you both ever feel competitive? 
No. Between us? No. Never. No, 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 I help her a lot. And I help him. That's yeah. why it works. I edit it's a good some relationship. of her videos. And I help him with some grammatical mistakes. Grammatical <laughs> mistakes. She was just teaching me All how... All women do that. How oh, women. Oh, they okay. love it. It's, Even if they are born speaking Y-O-U English. Y-O-U apostrophe... R-E. Oh, yeah, they love that. Oh, it gives them power. <laughs> she was teaching me how to say the word three. Yeah, because he says tree. <laughs> I said tree. I said, but tree is another word. And also bitch. Yeah, he says bitch, and he's supposed to say beach. So he says, I woke up in a bitch in Brazil. And I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, beach. You woke I mean, up some, sometimes you wake beach. up in a bitch. Yeah. In Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> it's much more common than we in I the... I mean, I feel like uh, you got the story right. I think, I think you nailed it. <laughs> in the beach. Beach is praia. Yes. And bitch... Bitch is <laughs> prostitute. What do you think of the food in America? I love it. I think LA was better. Yeah. How, how, we, I think the f- restaurants here are amazing. They're just expensive. Yeah. Well, we just expensive. hate the Jewish ones, right? Huh? We hate the Jewish restaurants. Sorry. Hey, it's a wild <laughs> swing. Not so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Not so loud. <laughs> um, do you do fast food at all or no? Ah, uh, we don't. Mm. I go Chipotle a lot. We do the like the healthy fast food, like Chipotle, Chipotle. sweet greens, you yeah. know. Is it Chipotle is considered healthy food? Is it right? It's organic. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, if you have to choose between that and like Burger King or McDonald's, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, right. Yeah. We eat a lot of diners. Diners. Are I great. love going to diners. What's your favorite diner in New York? It's not our favorite, but it's Gemini. but it's the one that's closest mm. to us that we Gemini. end up going to a lot. It's on Second Ave. Yeah. Yeah. Gemini. Second I like the Washington uh, Square Diner on 6th and 4th. It's good, too. Washington Diner. Yeah. It's that's, good. That's good Empire one. Diner is like a schwanky diner. Okay. It's very good. Oh, Empire is the one uh, is? that is in the van. It's, yeah. Uh, that's the one David used to take us to at like 4 a.m. all the time. Blue Ribbon? Oh, yeah. Blue Ribbon. But that's not a on diner. S- that's, that's a diner. A, it's on Sullivan. That's a diner? Oh, you don't... Do you guys know that one? That's a pretty fancy no. diner. It's Sullivan. It's, it's, it's pretty much a diner, but it's a high-end diner. It's like so. where the mm-hmm. chefs go when they get off work. Yeah, yeah, Oh. Yeah. So, wow. it's good. Nice. Uh, good food. What is that... Um, is it pate? What is the... Bone marrow? No, the duck liver... Foie gras? Yeah. Yeah, you can get that at like 4 a.m. Oh. Foie gras. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I you know. Yeah, if you're... Uh, that's a weird food, right? Have a lot of problems and a lot of money. It's a good <laughs> place do, to eat. Of course, yes. But we do go out to eat a lot, like every day, right? We, we go out to eat every day. Every like day. Sandler. Which is <laughs> that the problem is, like, if you translate your money to our money, convert. Convert. The she whole, loves correcting you. I yeah, love it. She I love it. But I love it, it too. It. But I love it too because I learn a lot. My English now is much better because of her. She taught me a lot of things. <laughs> Taught, taught, taught me a lot of things. <laughs> I, I like it. Okay, yeah. I like it. I like I it. love that the your your accent. If you're if you're from Brazil and you you learn how to speak English, you're just Israeli. That's yes. That's <laughs> what you come out as. It's, it's close as really, and Croatian too. Like like yeah, it's Slovenian. Great. It's it's yeah. I feel like I'm on birthright. Do you, do you know what birthright is? I have no idea. Go ahead, tell them. Birthright is uh, if you're Jewish, you get a free trip to Israel. All expenses paid. I played in Israel a championship called the Maccabi Games. Maccabi. Maccabi Games, yeah. My brother did that. That's like a Jewish Olympics. Yes. But it's like mostly for kids or like if you're a teenager, no? No. It's for adults? No, adults and even like, uh, like 45-year-old people. I guess they just look really young. Yeah, maybe they're looking. Maccabi. I played 1997. Wow. For the Brazilian national basketball team. Well, how was it? Was it a hell gig or did it, was it, did it go well? It was awesome. It was great. See, Jews have a good sense of humor. Say what you will about the tribe. It was good. It was good. It was pretty good. It was, a, it was good because it's like it's a huge celebration. Like Jewish people from all over the world go yeah. to Israel and they meet. Yeah. And so there's this celebration of the, 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 the religion and the people. So it was good. Yeah, my mom, uh, they, there was like a children's Maccabi games uh, where I'm from in Baltimore. And my mom hosted some people visiting who were in the games. Ah. And they bullied the shit out of me. I was like, okay, now I understand why there's anti-Semitism. <laughs> now I get it. 
I never they wouldn't before. let your mom. They, we were hosting them, so they stayed in in our house, and they just bullied the shit out of me the whole time they were there. What the fuck? Yeah, kids are kids. That's a good guest, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of jerks. I think this is a good time to work through this problem. Where were I'm th- eating my feelings and I'm talking about it. This Where is great. were they from? Uh. They were from, I think they were from Ohio. Oh. I don't know. There's not a, well, I, I grew up in like a, my, my high school was literally like 50% black, 50% Jewish. And I didn't know that the world was not like that when I moved to New York City in college. Where are you from? Baltimore. And, important note. Yeah, Baltimore, heavy Jewish population. I remember I had a, a teacher asked um, the classroom, like, what percentage of the world do you think is Jewish? And everyone raised their hand and said, uh, 80%. <laughs> Like, close. <laughs> I was like, no, what is it? 50%. And then after everyone guessed, everyone got it wrong. I think it was like less than 1%. It's less than 1%? It's percent? like less than 1% is Jewish. Yeah. But how much money do yes. they control? That's, <laughs> what's that's, the, that's, that's the next what's question. What's the percentage I'll of the find money? That 99%. At the, at the next meeting, I'll bring that up. I'll try to get a number, <laughs> an estimate for you. That's exactly what I thought. How oh, we're all yeah. thinking that. What's the percentage After of the After we vote on the weather, I'll, I'll bring this up. <laughs> Are you going to be touring Brazil, uh, Brazil again or what? My friend, uh, I'm planning to do my special here and go to Brazil and shoot one special in Portuguese. Where are you taping the special here? At the cellar. What? At the Village Underground. Nice. Hell yeah. It's, uh, but I'm just doing spots. Oh, you're not going to, you're not going to like... You know. I'm not going to do my own show. Because if I schedule my show, what's going to happen is I'm going to bring a lot of Brazilian people. I don't want Brazilian people in the taping of the show. Kind of all I want. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you push away people that love you? I'll explain to you. I love them too. But everything that I wrote is more focused on the I understand. American. It's people. not going to translate. A lot of them aren't going to speak English. When and, I yeah. do shows for my people, the show is a little bit different. There's a few things that don't hit as well as they do if I do for the Americans. Yeah. Because... When I do show for uh, when I do show for Brazilians, it's we laughing at America. It's not the same as like me laughing at you with you. Yeah, we you laugh know? at America also. I mean, yeah. you get, like it's a pretty fair game. Yeah, but like but, but Brazilians, some people, some reference they not necessarily have that strong. You know, they don't understand a little bit of the reference that I use sometimes as a joke or two. That it's not a don't hit as well as they do. Because I'm performing for Americans for the past four years, you know. So I want to do just spots. I'm going to do three spots, 45 minutes. How many? How many? Three. Oh, okay. Three. <laughs> I'm going to do three spots. And then I'm going to shoot the whole spots, and that's going to be the special. So 15, 15, and 15. Yeah. That's what I'm... Yeah, uh, I can't, I can't yeah. miss. That's the thing. I'm not going to have another chance. It's a big gamble because you don't I know, know what the audience is going to be know, like. I know, I know. Let's, let's pray for the best. When, uh, what, what date do you know yet? The beginning of December. That's a good time. Yeah. I'm scheduled for December 2nd, but I'm not sure yet. But okay. I'm, I think it's going to be okay. Are you producing? No, not no. this one. She's just helping with threes and... <laughs> yeah, I just help It's beach. With yeah, bitch. It's beach. And, yeah. beach and... Are you going to have a warm-up comedian? Oh, I'm gonna have a. Is, I'm gonna just be in He's the. Doing be- a set on the showcase. Yeah, I'm doing a set on the showcase. It's not okay, like a special session. Session. Okay. Yeah, I'm, it's just gonna be a normal show, and I'm not gonna make my spot. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I again, a lot of respect to you. That's, you really want to swing the bat. Yes, sir. That's an challenge. earnest swing. I like the challenge. That's what I like. It's a real swing. Yes. All right, let's plug some stuff and uh, wrap this puppy up. Um. Oh, yeah, so I actually have something to plug. I just was uh, in Seattle with Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, Robert Smigel. We have our own podcast called Let's Make a Poop. We just uh, filmed one on Think Fest with Ken Jennings, uh, and that will be on Triumph the Insult Comic Dog's YouTube channel, probably Spotify and other places very soon. And you can see me at uh, Stand Up New York every Friday in the comic strip every Wednesday. Oh, that's good, my friend. Follow me on my Instagram, at Rafi Comedy. That's it. And you gotta plug your show. You're my okay, my YouTube channel, Vipurai. Uh, it's V I P O R A I on YouTube. I would like you to do something for me because okay. I, I like the way you talk. Um, <laughs> can you say in uh, Portuguese, uh, mm-hmm. uh, "Welcome to the Cheat Day Show"? Give me like an introduction What's for this. Uh, uh, 
Welcome to the Cheat Day Show. Cheat Day Show. Yeah, I want, to, I want you to do an intro for this show, okay. but do it in Portuguese, okay. the way you would deliver it on your show. Ok. Bem-vindos ao Cheat Day Show. Vamos bater um papo muito legal. Fiquem ligados. Uh. <laughs> Sounded, I get why she has 50,000 followers. I get it. It's easy. That's amazing. Wish you were my wife. <laughs> We don't, don't even know what she said, know, though. She could have been like, look I at know. these two idiots <laughs> sitting at this table. So we, we plugged your show on YouTube? Yeah. All right. Uh, this is The Cheat Day Show, The Cheat Day Show on all platforms, uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok now. We are nice. TikTok famous. And uh, I'm Ryan Reese. You can find me at, at RR Comedy, and you can catch me at the Comedy Cellar, usually on Monday nights. Uh, guys, eat, cheat well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Cheat Day Show podcast. To learn more about our show, the hosts, the comedians, our guests, our chefs, and more, visit our website, thecheatdayshow.com. Also, follow along with us on our social media, at The Cheat Day Show, on Instagram and Twitter. Future episodes can be found in all the places you get your favorite podcast. Our show is also sponsored by the world-famous Comedy Cellar on McDougal Street in New York City's Greenwich Village. Visit ComedyCellar.com for show lineups happening seven days a week. Later, cheaters.